Welcome back to Weddy TV. In this episode, we're in the Marcasian island called Hiva Oa. We've taken about a three and a half hour flight from Tahiti to get here, and it's an incredibly beautiful spot. As soon as we got there, we were so keen, we had to go down and check out the boat we had for the week. This is a common style of boat you see in French Polynesia, especially Tahiti. They use them for chasing mahi-mahi and don't have your conventional steering wheel like we use here. To say we were impressed was an understatement. This boat went through the sea incredibly well. Not once were you getting big banging or jolting through the boat and we'd be punching into sea going 20-25 knots all the time. A beautiful smooth ride out, heading to this magical spot called Motani Island. Speaking to the locals, apparently this was the spot. And on the very first dive, it became very apparent that we were in absolute fish paradise. These islands in this area we we're in gets very little pressure, so there are so many fish and so many species. We've come all this way to compete in the 2022 Inter-Pacific Spearfishing Championships. This is competed between multiple different countries in the South Pacific. There was an abundance of fish to choose from on every single dive. But in the competition, the fish fish was enormous, with around about 60 different species that we had to learn. And of course, being a New Zealander, diving cold, temperate waters, virtually every species on the list is not available here in New Zealand. So it's all new learning for us. I got such a big fright crashing into that stingray on the way to the surface. Fortunately in my case, I do have a little bit of experience in the tropics, so I do understand a lot of the species that were on the list. There were some endemic species in this area that we didn't see anywhere else, like that Marcasian groper, that yellow looking groper in the middle of the frame back there. Most of our days consisted of scouting. So even though we had a spear gun, it was more for protection. We weren't shooting fish that were in the chosen areas for the competition. We'd stumble across spots like this, which was fantastic. You see all these big surgeon fish. Although not extremely exciting looking, there is three different species of surgeons in this big school. This is exactly what we want to look for in a competition. So many good species to spare. You'll notice the changing visibility throughout the video as there was lots of upwelling and there was lots of plankton in the water. So sometimes we were diving nice clear blue water like you'd expect in the tropics around about 20 to maybe 25 meters visibility. But sometimes as you'll see in the video it would drop all the way down to 8 meters or even less. Job fish like these ones here, schooling midwater, were one of the most basic and most common fish we saw when diving. 
Normally a really prized fish to shoot and difficult to get close to. Here it was just absolutely unbelievable how many there were. As in this case, I was only about 10 meters down and the bottom is 30 meters and they swam right up to me and started circling me. After seeing that school of jobfish, I did swim out wide out on the sand and spotted some bait fish. And chasing those bait fish, there was dog tooth tuna, some more jobfish, and a really nice big golden trevally. This would have been a great fish to shoot in the competition, but not a target today. There's that dog tooth again. We were absolutely fizzing and desperate to get into an area where we could go shoot some fish. So we headed down to the bottom of the island. This wild looking country was so exciting when we were going along. Big steep cliffs dropping into the water. And as you're about to see, it follows that suit once it goes below the surface. We were told this is a really good spot for dog tooth tuna, there could be wahoo, as well as many, many big reef fish. The big game fish though were not a species we came here to spear. We're here to learn all the different reef species that were mostly on the list, and it wouldn't have been a really smart decision to shoot a lot of the big fish and damage our gear. It was quite eerie drifting down the mm. steep drop off as the visibility would get lower and lower the deeper that you went. Not that I had a sounder but you could dive as deep as you want down this steep wall and it would just keep going. Maybe down to 60 to 80 meters by the looks. There's these black jacks or black trevally, big schools of big surgeons. The odd dog tooth would come cruising through. Just a really wild looking spot. You get that funny sinking feeling when you're drifting down that wall and you can just go deeper and deeper and deeper and you're trying to sort of stop your descent so you don't go too deep. Drifting back down the wall, we did find this ni nice platform that came up to maybe 25 metres or so. This made for a more comforting landing spot so you could lie on top of the reef and wait for the fish to come in. Just like New Zealand, fishy looking spots mm -hmm. look quite similar around the world. This beautiful platform here had lots of current pouring on top of it and there was lots of nice fish here. I was eager to shoot one of these job fishes. They were just all over the place and I'd seen some absolute massive ones.
Sigatera? Sigatera? This one, Sigatera? Oh. Utu. Utu? Sigatera or? <laughs> After giving the job fish to the boatman, you hear me asking about Sigatera. Something I'm really nervous about when I go to different tropical islands. It's not something you want to catch because it never actually leaves your system and accumulates over, over time and can really mess with your nervous system. Just like New Zealand, if you're heading to the tropics and wanting to find a good looking spot, you're looking for the same things like you're looking here. You're looking for lots of current, variation in the bottom, pinnacles, points, lots of bait fish. If you're finding these things, you're in the right spot. It doesn't matter where you go in, in the world, you can apply the same techniques that you use in New Zealand and these can often work. These are the big surgeon fish that you'll see schooling a lot. They're a really good sign of a fishy spot and they actually make really, really good eating. See how I'm grabbing its face? As even though they look like a reasonably placid, soft fish, they have really nasty spikes on the bottom of their belly, as well as these nasty, nasty blades on its tail, hence the name surgeon fish. Those will slice straight through your hand. Another example of how amazing the fishery was here, a fish called a coronation trout, which often can be difficult to approach and can be quite prized depending on where you are in the world. Here, not very clever, and there was lots of them. This one good? Oh, good. I shoot more? Sigatera, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, good one. I shoot more. I got a better response from the boatman about the coronation trout. As we were learning with all these different species what was going to be the safest to eat and what was going to be the best ones to shoot. Another species that may be endemic to this area, although I, I haven't seen it in the other Pacific Islands, is the six bar groper. These guys here you'd find on the bottom of steep walls or amongst the boulders. A really nice looking fish, very beautiful.
The structure in the bottom here was really, really quite interesting and different. A lot of the other Pacific Islands will go to, you get lots of coral reef and fringing coral reef. Whereas here, you've got a lot of steep sort of drop-offs and a lot of white rock with not much coral. Kind of similar to what you're getting in Hawaii or even in the Mediterranean. The best way I summed up this place in Hiva Oa was it was sort of a cross between diving Tahiti and diving Hawaii. Here's one of those Marquesian gropers. I haven't seen these anywhere else when I've been diving, but they certainly were quite common here. Is this one good to eat? That's yeah, good, eh? At the end of the day, of course, we had a really, really nice catch with lots of the team getting some nice fish. It was a good way to work out fish ID and discuss which ones were going to be the best to eat. We've got the six bar groper, we've got my casein groper, we've got coronation trout, we've got jobfish, we've got dog tooth tuna, we've got different surgeons. And fortunately we had some old dodgy pizza for the team to power back up on on the way home. A great start to our trip. Looking forward to day two. Day two, we're heading to a much closer location to where we were staying and had to head around, as I affectionately called it, seasick point, because every time I tried to dive here, I got so seasick, which was really bizarre. I'm guessing it was because it's quite steep and there's a lot of sort of a washing machine movement here. The coastline looks similar to what we get up in the far north. we did get some bad visibility. Heading up shallow here, there was a lot of plankton in the water and it was quite green. This was one of the main reasons I was getting seasick, swimming right up in these shallow water, looking for the smaller species that were on the fish list for the competition and just rolling around backwards and forwards. Once I got sick of that, I headed out a little bit deeper and found a nice drop off.
there's those key fish again, those big surging fish. If you're heading to the tropics and you see schools of those, you're in a good spot. There'll be lots of other species that will come past there also. This area was destined to be zone two for our competition, and this certainly looked like one of the best spots. We'd see some big long nose emperor like that one in the middle of the screen there. A really good fish to shoot. While not quite as many fish in this area like there was at Motani Island the day before, they are still extremely prolific when it comes to spearfishing in tropical islands. You can see that sort of dark green tinge in the water. The water's still reasonably clear, but there's obviously a lot of plankton in it. I almost thought this was a kingfish coming in here. But it's just a rainbow runner, sort of pretending to be one. Like the previous day, we needed to go do some spearing to top off. This time I'm armed with my 60 centimeter carbon gun with no reel or float line as we're just going to target some of the smaller fish since we got big fish the day before. This is one of the goat fish that's on the list. There's quite a few of these in the area and they make good eating. There's not many places you can dive with a 60 centimeter gun and have no problem shooting a heap of fish. It really just shows how incredible the fishery was here. So, so many fish. The water was quite dirty on this point on this drop off, but the fish life was absolutely incredible. Every single dive, this big school of jobfish would swim up to us. They were not phased by us at all. One of the big differences when diving in an area like this or diving in the tropics is there's more dynamics you have to get used to. In New Zealand, we don't so much shoot fish in holes or in cracks. Mostly we shoot fish in open water. Whereas here, there's so many species to be found and speared up in cracks, near holes, or hard against the bottom like these really big goat fish. This goat fish was the other species that was on the list. Also very good eating and these get really big. There's those big jobfish again. 
then you often meet your halfway down and swimming to see what you're up to. This was perfect country for those different types of groper. And here's one of those six bar groper. Again, so easy to approach with a very short gun. It was important that we shot lots of different species on this trip. It gave us a big diversity of fish that we could eat, but also meant that everyone in our team could learn all these different fish so they knew for the competition. You know, this is the other one. This is different to what you shot. Oh, yeah. This is what I shot yesterday. Too. For some of the team, like Storm here, who's from this Stewart is Island, this is there. completely foreign to him, yeah. as he would never have seen most of these species before in his life. That paddle tail? Yeah. And that's the six bar. That one's not on the list. Our common discussions when we get back to the boat was identifying the different fish. Then back around seasick point to head home. I hope you enjoy the episode and get ready for part two because it's even better again. In part two, we managed to stumble across absolute paradise at a different island. And along with this, some incredible diving in fish, including into big schools of mahi-mahi on fads, more dog tooth tuna and dirty water, amongst so much else. Stay tuned for that episode.